Good morning, everybody, and welcome to First Christian Church. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us this morning. Uh, we are well into Lent at this moment, and uh, if you've, whether or not you've given anything up for Lent this year, we're talking about a story this morning where there is always enough, where the, the prophet will fill up uh, some jars of oil and turns out there's always enough. Huh, would you look at that? There's always enough when God is around. Welcome to First Christian Church, everybody. service where we share with one another our joys and concerns. Of course, you're always welcome to reach out to us at FCC Palestine, pastor at fccpalestine.org. Uh, we'd always love to hear from you, um, and we uh, love to get your prayer requests. Um, of course, there's a lot of people still recovering from, um, from the storm we had a couple of weeks ago, and so we want to continue to pray for those people. Um, we also want to uh, continue to pray for the, the pandemic uh, as, as things continue to progress there. Um, uh, we also, uh, and, and for all of those who are sick, um, you all have your own uh, worries and anxieties that you have uh, right now, and this is the time that we can bring those before the Lord. So if you'll, uh, if you'll, come before the Lord with me and we also want to give thanks for all of those um, all of those things that that we have um, because most of us have enough and what a wonderful thing that is to have enough um, even if it's not all you want enough is enough and what a wonderful thing that is so let's go to God in prayer God we thank you for giving us enough and Lord, we pray for the will and the strength to share our enough with those who don't have enough. God, we also pray for those who are sick, that they would be healed. 
And God, we pray for those who are recovering from the storm. Oh, Lord, that you would help them knit their lives back together. Lord, we give thanks for all of the things that we have in our lives and all those, all the love that surrounds us, oh Lord. We give you thanks for your outpouring of love to us that we see on a daily basis. And it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray all these things. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into the jars and as each is filled, put it to the side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went out and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell your oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what's left. May the Lord add his blessing 
to this reading. Let us pray. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. I pray, O oh Lord, that my words will not only be mine, O oh God, but yours. Amen. So, you know, this uh, last couple of weeks have been uh, crazy for a lot of people. Uh, you know, for us, we didn't have water for nine days. Um, and uh, so at first we were flushing our toilets with like snow. You know, we'd like get snow and we'd boil it in a pot and then we'd pour that into the back of the toilet so we could flush it and um and but the problem was is then the snow melted and we still didn't have <laughs> we still didn't have um water and we had filled up the bathtubs and all that stuff um and uh, I was thinking oh man what are we going to do cuz we had like bottles of drinking water um but I was thinking man and I started to get nervous you know that there wasn't going to be enough water you know to do the basic things that we that we needed to do. Um, and so I started kind of worrying about that. And I think it might have been the kind of, I didn't intentionally pray about it, but it was probably like the worried kind of prayer. You know, the Apostle Paul says, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but even though we don't, the Spirit speaks for us in sighs and groans that the human mind could not understand. I think it was kind of one of those prayers. My worries were a little bit. I was like, man, you know, what are we going to do if we have enough water? And then I was just like, you know, just focus on what's ahead, what we need to do. And then lo and behold, um, a church member comes over and brings me. They had taken all their jugs, like their milk jugs and their tea jugs and like bottles of Gatorade. And they had water and they had filled them up, filled those up with water. And it wasn't drinkable water at the time because we were still under a boil water notice. Um, but uh, but. It was jugs of water that I could flush my toilets with and, uh, and, and stuff like that. And I was like, thank God! My prayer is answered just like right there. It just shows up. I didn't have to even ask. It just, it just like magically happened, just like came, um, came from God, um, came from the goodness of God. And I thought immediately when I saw those jugs, I thought of this story from 2 Kings <laughs> Where, where Elijah helps this widow. And so here's what's going on in, in this story. So Israel is, is the northern kingdom at this point. There's been a civil war, and there's, there's the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Um, they're both, you know, God's people, uh, but they have split into two separate groups, north and south. And the northern kingdom is Israel. And Israel is under constant civil war and battle and turnover of rulers. It's very unstable. And they're always fighting some foreign enemy too. And, and that's what's going on uh, during this story is they're having, these, uh, they're having th this great upheaval. And so the nation is very stable. And anytime you have like instability and warfare, you got like a lot of people that, don't, that go without and don't have food or don't have um, enough money. Uh, and, 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 and that's where this widow is, except for her husband has just died. Okay. So her husband was one of the prophets that accompanied Elisha in this, what they call company of prophets. And so they're not really priests, but they're more like religious wanderers and they go around and they have these two prophets a lot. Uh, they had these two prophets, Elijah and Elisha. And this company kind of goes around and assists them with whatever they need, helps them out, um, helps them. Uh, some of them probably wrote some stuff down, uh, which is where we get some of the stuff that we have from the prophets today. Um, and uh, this woman's husband is one of those guys. But apparently he had accumulated some kind of debt because they were in this time where there's not a lot of stuff to go around and had to borrow money. And um, when he died... His wife then assumes all his debts, but she doesn't have any money either. Um, and it was a perfectly acceptable uh, thing back in those days, even in Israel, um, that if you didn't have anything left, the last thing you always have left is yourself. Um, and so you can sell yourself uh, in, into slavery. Um, but this man's debts were so great 
that they would take her kids, her two boys, into slavery to, to, to pay off his debt. Um, you can imagine as a parent what a horrible, horrible thing that would be. Like, you know, your spouse accumulated so much debt uh, that you would now have to, that your children will be taken away from you to um, live in, in a period of servitude. And these weren't supposed to be permanent servitude. Um, it was only supposed to be at most for a period of seven years, but seven years is a long time uh, in, in the life of a child. And who knows if the person who quote unquote owned that person wouldn't find some reason to, you know, right. To make them go into longer servitude. Right. Um, that happened all the time. For example, here in America, um, we had, uh, in the early days before, uh, Af the African slave trade, we had in the United States was called, uh, before the United States was the United States, when it was just the colonies, we had uh, what was called indentured servitude. And you would go and uh, basically sell everything you had to become one of these uh, indentured servants who would go and like get a plot of land that was quote unquote yours that you would work, but somebody else really owned it. And they actually technically kind of owned you for a period of time. And they would always make up all these false penalties for why you had to go longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. And so a lot of people spent their entire lives as indentured servants, um, or, they're technically slaves, but they didn't call them that at the time. Um, and this was, you know, in the, in the 1600s. Um, and a lot of early, early people who lived in the Americas lived their lives like that. And so as a, as a mother of two children, you would be incredibly afraid that this would be the fate of your children. And lo and behold, Elisha the prophet, you know, comes, uh, comes around and uh, she, uh, she, you know, pleads with him. She, she finds him and she pleads with him. You know, my husband's dead. They're going to sell my sons into slavery. And Elisha says, how can I help you? Right? Like she's asking, how can I help you? What do you have in your house? That's what he said. What do you have? And she says, all I have is a little jar of olive oil. Olive oil uh, back then was something that you use for all kinds of stuff. You could use it for cooking. You could use it to light your, um, your oil lamps. Um, and it was a process thing and, and could be valuable in large quantities just because it's something everybody needed. Um, it was kind of like gasoline uh, back then, but you could also eat it uh, if you needed to. Um, and so everybody needed it, so it's always a valuable commodity. Um, and, and so Elijah said, go borrow all the empty jars that you can find for your from your neighbors, as many as you can find. You know, and then get those all and close the door and prayerfully pour those all of your little bit of olive oil into those jars. And she does it. I mean, you think, well, that's a weird plan, you know, but she goes around knocking on uh, all her neighbors doors. Hey, can I have your jars? Hey, can I have your jars? And, you know, kudos to her neighbors, right, for helping her out, because it wasn't like jars were exactly cheap back then. You, had, you, you made them out of clay. Um, but it wasn't like you just have a lot of plastic bottles laying around back then, right? You know, you have all these jars. And so her neighbors give her all the jars that she can carry, and she takes them into her house, and her and her son shut the door, and they start pouring this, this olive oil out into the jar, and this little jar that she has of olive oil fills up a big one, put the lid on that one, move it over, fill it up another one. That little jar somehow is filling up all this, you know, filling up all this night move it over again and again and again and again until she's got this big old house, you know, this house full of olive oil jars that are filled up from this little tiny one. And then finally she reaches over to her son and says, hand me another one. And the son says, there aren't any more. And then the jar ran out and Elisha tells her, you know, sell all that oil, pay off your debts, and there's going to be enough left over. For you to, for you and your sons, to live off of. That's an that's a amazing miracle story, right? Um, from the Old Testament, there, 
There's a, that jar lasts until there's enough left over to pay off her debt so her sons don't have to go into slavery and that, that they can also live on after the fact. I kind of felt that way, like having a bunch of jars full of water show up at my house in the moment that I, that I needed them. Now, I can't, um, I can't do miracles like that. Um, and I don't know anybody who can. Maybe you can. If you can, I would love you for you to reach out to me and, uh, and let's get together and figure out a way to, 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 to you know, feed the whole world. Um, uh, so I wish I could, but I, but I can't do that. But here's what this story tells me. That there is always just enough when God is involved. Okay? There is always just enough when God is is involved. Some people say there's always just enough, right? And that's not true because there are plenty of people who go hungry. There's plenty of people who don't have enough to eat, right? There's plenty of people who go without. But when God is involved, it always seems like there's always just enough. There was just enough water for me and my family to be able to take care of our basic necessities um, when, when we needed it. There is just enough when people choose to share with those who don't have. There is just enough when, when people, in the name of God, because God is around, go down here to the stock pot and serve meals to folks who need it. There is just enough uh, to go around when you go down over here on the corner and you fill up the food box on the corner that anybody can take out. Because God is in your life and you choose and are moved to do that. There's just enough to go around when we um, take some of our, our hard-earned money, and it doesn't have to be a lot, but we donate to the food bank or we bring food to the food bank. There's just enough because God is around. And it doesn't mean that everybody's, you know, living fat and living high on the hog, but there is enough when God is around because God encourages us to share with one another. And so maybe we can't make, you know, maybe we can't make uh, uh, infinite jars of oil. I wish we could. And if there's some way to ever do that, I hope we figure it out so that we can do that. But when God's around and God's in our life, Christians help each other. They help others, and it makes, means there's just enough to go around because we sacrifice a little bit of what we have so others can have some of that too. And you ask, you know, in, in the world, you know, you look around the world and you see that, that hunger's on the rise even, even in the United States, you know, and you think, well, why, you know, why is that? We're supposed to be this Christian nation. Why are there... Why are there people that go hungry? And some people say, no, that's just not true. All those things are made up. But that doesn't surprise me because there's only just enough when God is around. And there's a lot of us who live like God doesn't exist. We're greedy and we take all of it for ourselves, or we hoard stuff, you know. And it's no, it's, 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 no, uh, it, it's no surprise that hunger is on the rise when income inequality is on the rise, right? Like that's just going to happen when people are hoarding. It's, it's also people get afraid that there's not going to be enough for themselves, so they, so they hoard for themselves and they hang on to what they have. But when God is around, we let go a little bit of what we have. And there's just enough. And there's just enough for us to get by. I pray that when you hear stories like that, particularly, um, particularly in, uh, in, in times like these, that we would remember those who need a little bit more. That we would give our hearts to um, places that feed the hungry, donate to places that, that help those who need a little bit more than we do, use a little bit of what we have to help somebody else just have just enough. We can survive on very little, and those of us who have a lot can share. 
And that's what happens when God comes around. Is God indwells us and encourages us to let go of even a little bit so that others can have just enough because where God is, there's just enough. We can live in selfish scarcity or we can live in sacrificial plenty. One of those is the kingdom of heaven. where there is just enough when God is around. Jesus the Christ, that one who took five loaves and two fishes because he didn't want to send the people away hungry and he turned five loaves and two fishes into enough for all those people with seven baskets left over. Sounds a lot like what the prophet Elijah did, he knew the same thing. That where God is, there's enough for everybody. I believe that and I try to live my life that way. Do you live your life that way? In sharing what you have with others. I pray we would because that is the kingdom of heaven. And I got to experience a little bit of that kingdom living when I, who have normally had plenty, did not have enough. God's people came through for me. And so I want to come through for others. And I hope you will too. So that everybody can have just enough. It is the good news of the gospel and it is the word of the Lord that Jesus the Christ gave him his very own self for us. So that whether we have a little or a lot, we would at least have just enough to get by. And that's the same reason that we gather around this table every Sunday, whether it's your coffee table or whether it's a table like this and our in-person worship. And so I'll give you a few moments to gather your elements. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he first took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. For as often as you eat my body and you drink my blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Thanks be to God.
Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad that you worship with us. I, I pray that you will know within your heart that when God is around, there's always enough. And I pray that you'll open your heart um, and your, uh, your resources to those who need it. Because th there always is somebody who needs just a little more. And uh, usually we can afford um, to help them out. So I pray that the peace of Christ would be with you and guard your hearts and minds and that the, the light of God would shine upon you. Have a wonderful week, everybody. God bless you.